Chairman of the Council of Ministers of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, Nikita Khrushchev. Mobile units of WHO-TV, KRNT-TV, and WOI-TV are being used in this special pool telecast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack Shelley speaking from the Des Moines Municipal Airport where a mood of expectancy has been gathering now for many hours and is just about at the peak at this moment as we anticipate that if the latest announcement is correct, Premier Khrushchev's plane will be landing here in a matter of only a couple of minutes. We have been watching for the last several hours, those of us who have been here during that time, uh, the first 707 jet airplanes, which most of us have seen, touching down one by one at the Des Moines Municipal Airport. The first one was a commercial jet plane, which bore about 125 members of the press, radio, and TV party, all of whom uh, have been preceding the Russian premier as he makes his stops all the way across the country. And then, one by one, we have seen other jets of the type you're looking at right now, planes operated by the U.S. Air Force and used by the Military Air Transport Service for so-called VIP flights, which have been bringing in first another collection of radio, TV, and press people, then the last one arriving only about five minutes or so ago, carried with it men and women of uh, what might be called somewhat secondary importance with the Russian party. Now you can see those who are watching the, the crowd gathered at the scene. We're viewing at the present moment people who are standing on the side of the airport runway where the crowds will be greeting the Russian premier. And we are at the same time watching what is going on as the members of the press assemble on a large truck body which has been assembled to one side here and which has mounted at the present time on it something like uh, eight or a dozen uh, sound and still motion picture cameras to be used in the coverage of Khrushchev's arrival. Off in another direction, while the members of the military police and the Air National Guard stand expectantly waiting to move forward with the ramp which will provide the stairway by which Khrushchev will come down from his plane. In other directions we see various members of the group of dignitaries who are going to extend an official welcome for the city of Des Moines and for the state of Iowa. Among those waiting, of course, and by the way, at the very moment that I am speaking, you are looking what appears to me to be the convertible car in which the Russian premier will ride. He was given his choice, we understood, of having either a closed air-conditioned limousine or this open one of the convertible type. And uh, the weather, while it has been a little doubtful, and while there is a forecast of possible thunderstorm conditions this afternoon, right now seems to be fairly favorable for his ride downtown, and it looks to us as though they're going to prepare the convertible that you see for his ride downtown. There has been a great crowd gathering along McKinley Avenue, which runs down to Fleur Drive, uh, along the fences just outside the south end, or I should say the north end of the Des Moines airport, uh, trying to get whatever glimpse they can. Perhaps you can see in the distance now some of the people gathered there beyond the airport fence. You are looking over the heads of the photographers and some of the dignitaries. There are more newsmen than anybody else in this group that you are watching in the immediate foreground who are watching for the arrival of the Khrushchev plane. We are told by others of our a new staff who are handling this uh, pool broadcast for the Central Iowa television stations. We are told that there are downtown now in the vicinity of Hotel Fort Des Moines something in excess of a thousand persons that police are already on hand controlling the crowds there. And moreover, we are told that uh, there have been some signs of protesting groups visible in the vicinity of the Fort Des Moines Hotel. For a brief run down to the other places, we're going to take a look right now at the Fort Des Moines Hotel site, where later on you will see Chairman Khrushchev of the Council of Ministers of the Union of Socialist Soviet Republics as he arrived. Here you are looking in the area at the corner of the Fort Des Moines Hotel there at 9th and Walnut. Notice the tremendous crowd of people gathered there on the parking ramp, on that unique and circular parking ramp, which undoubtedly offers a wonderful place from which to view Khrushchev's arrival at the hotel. 
Now here you see uh, some of the people who are standing at barricades and there are some signs, as you can see, expressing sentiments of one kind or another. Notice that the police in the Ninth and Walnut area have people kept pretty firmly behind these barricades and of course they'll be kept well back, we understand, at the time when the Premier does arrive at the hotel. Now you're getting a look uh, actually into a portion of the hotel itself and uh, you can see uh, people waiting uh, on the route and over the red carpet uh, which Khrushchev will tread on as he enters the Fort Des Moines Hotel. From this position we are going to move to our other pickup point at uh, 14th and Locust, the intermediate point on the pickup uh, and we hope that from there we'll be able to get a view of the Premier after he has left the airport. For the moment though, we're going to return to the Des Moines airport and take a look at again at uh, the jet planes which have borne the advanced members of the party and at the scenes which are to be found here at the airport as we wait for the arrival of the Russian Premier's plane. Notice here, this is a, a house just across from the airport side, not at all distant from the place where the F-86 jet fighters of the Iowa Air National Guard are customarily based. And you'll see that uh, while it is not a packed crowd, that there are substantial numbers of people there who uh, have been uh, building up over the course of the last several hours. Some of those cars over there, which you can see on the other side of McKinley, uh, some of those cars have been there since uh, 8 o'clock this morning, as some people came out to choose advantageous spots. Uh, the crowd of pedestrians has really just built up, I would say, within the last hour to any size. Just before we came on the air with our broadcast from the scene, I walked over to the, eight, the gate of the Air National Guard base and saw that uh, there were substantial numbers of people lined up most of the way down Fleur Drive, or I should say McKinley, to Fleur Drive. Now we're taking another look at the scene where the members of the party of official greeters are waiting to give Khrushchev his welcome to the state of Iowa and the city of Des Moines. Among those in the party who are going to be welcoming the governor, of, uh, or be welcoming Khrushchev, of course, are the governor, Governor and Mrs. Lovelace, Lieutenant Governor and Mrs. Edward McManus, Mayor and Mrs. Charles Isles of Des Moines, Mr. and Mrs. Frank Depute, he is the President of the Chamber of Commerce, and Mr. and Mrs. John Adams, John Adams, of course, being the Executive Secretary of the Greater Des Moines Chamber of Commerce. And while they are waiting, as you can see, uh, it's almost impossible to distinguish uh, between those who are members of the official greeting party and those who are among the hordes of newsmen gathered here to cover this event. Uh, there have been throughout the afternoon uh, different versions. Uh, one time saying 1.25 would be his arrival time, on other occasions that 1.45 would be his arrival time, and then just as we took the air, the word was that he'd be here by now, that at approximately 1.26 p.m., uh, Premier Khrushchev flying in from San Francisco, California in a Boeing 707 jet of the United States Air Force would have landed here. Here is the entrance to the Iowa Air National Guard's quarters out here. And this is the place where the dignitaries had gathered, first of all, in order to get ready for the arrival of the Russian Premier. There's quite uh, a lineup of cars uh, already in formation, police cars and uh, civilian type cars, also those uh, known as pool cars carrying photographers for radio and for television. And we are now taking a look at that long lineup of cars, each of them in its proper place, each one bearing a number designating its place in the parade. And now we're back again to the men who are waiting at parade rest out there uh, by the ramp, which Khrushchev will be using. Uh, those who are familiar with the uh, Des Moines uh, area, and in particular the Des Moines Fire Department, might be interested to know that uh, Lieutenant John Connors, uh, the red-haired uh, man who for so many years has been a spokesman for the Des Moines firefighters, is going to drive the uh, car which Governor Lovelace and uh, Khrushchev are expected to ride in for just a very short time. As a matter of fact, Johnny was telling us just before we came on the air that he expects to drive the car only as far as the place where Khrushchev will enter it here on the edge of the airport runway and that then President Eisenhower's own personal driver will take over the wheel of Khrushchev's car. Now let's take another look downtown and see how things are coming on at some of the other points where pickups are being made. Here we are once more downtown in the vicinity of the route that will be traveled by the uh, Russian Premier 
As you can see, there are very large crowds on hand around the Fort Des Moines there, but you can also see that there are some protest signs. There's one which reads, the only good communist is a dead one. And the D is uh, just a little bit out of place in the middle there, isn't it? Uh, a rather hasty job, perhaps, of sign making, but a demonstration that there are those who are protesting. Uh, certainly, those folks who are on the circular ramp, uh, which you have been watching from the position of uh, Ninth and Walnut, uh, certainly those folks uh, have an excellent view up there and uh, uh, we consider them to be pretty lucky because uh, there had been some talk in advance that uh, security regulations might not allow the general public or even news photographers to take up a position there along the ramp. However, as you can see, it's, it's crowded to capacity except, I believe, for the top level. Oh, yes, even up there, there are some people, apparently a limited number there. And if we can, uh, we'll try now to take a look at the position at 14th and Locust, where we hope to be able to see something of the crowd waiting at about the midway point on the uh, cavalcade's route from the Fleur Drive and McKinley down to downtown Des Moines, where he will disembark at the Fort Des Moines Hotel. For the moment, we're continuing to view that scene, as we have said, in the vicinity of the Fort Des Moines Hotel. And notice that in the Plymouth building there, right across the street from the Fort Des Moines Hotel, uh, a great many people's business offices are places where not much business is being transacted this afternoon. They are uh, filled to capacity, every window on the sides which command a view of the entrance to the Fort Des Moines with interested persons. We were told uh, from our reporter on the scene at the Fort Des Moines a short time ago that for a time at least, the police endeavored to persuade those who were farther uh, back uh, from the scene with signs to stay back and for those who were closer up to join them also. But uh, at the present time, it appeared to us from our view of the Fort Des Moines that some of those protest signs were rather close to the scene. Again at the airport, taking a look at uh, some of the people who are uh, waiting and uh, they have been waiting, many of them, since uh, 9 or 10 o'clock this morning, at least, to get their uh, motion pictures and their still pictures of the arrival of the Russian premier. Uh, it was a matter of great interest to most of us who are uh, newsmen to uh, see this large uh, commercial jet plane arrive uh, about uh, an hour ago, uh, and uh, from it debouching uh, 125 or more news people, all of whom had made the flight from San Francisco. They report to us that uh, Premier Khrushchev certainly was in brighter mood when he left San Francisco than he was when he left Los Angeles, California. As most of you are well aware by now, there was a great deal of concern on the part of State Department people that uh, Khrushchev had gotten so angry at some of the exchanges in Los Angeles that uh, he might actually make good his threat that he was going to leave and to go home. But uh, in San Francisco, he has been able to mingle with the public more generally than was the case anywhere else along the tour so far. And uh, in addition to that, uh, he apparently, by consensus from every newsman I've talked to who has been on the whole tour, got the warmest welcome in San Francisco that he received any place along the route. And this seems to have encouraged him a great deal and to have made him pretty happy. Here we are inside the Fort Des Moines Hotel. You notice that magazine there bearing the uh, letters USSR? That, of course, is the official English language magazine published in Russia under an exchange agreement which allowed it to be sold in this country in return for the sale of uh, uh, some American magazines inside Soviet Russia. The other one was a magazine which uh, outlines uh, some of the history and background, some of the facts about the man who's going to arrive here at the Des Moines airport very shortly. Once again, we're watching some people getting out at the Fort Des Moines Hotel. Uh, very frankly, uh, nobody can tell from this particular uh, point uh, whether these are members of the Russian party or not, but I suspect it may very well be the case that they are. Just about uh, 15 minutes, I would guess, before we took the air with this telecast, uh, the last plane which uh, landed here, the most recent jet plane, arrived with uh, a large number of members of the Russian party of a somewhat uh, secondary uh, rank. And now we are seeing on our television view the plane bearing Russian Premier Khrushchev himself. He is arriving in a Boeing 707, which has been, of course, in the air from San Francisco for a matter of something uh, more than uh, two hours now. and. 
it makes a beautiful sight in the air as have all these other jets as they approach the Des Moines Airport. An excellent shot here. You can see that 707, wheels not yet down, as it goes into its landing pattern and as preparations now very rapidly move forward uh, to have the official welcome as soon as that plane touches the ground. It's quite an impressive sight to watch these uh, jets as they come in. Uh, we have seen now uh, three of them uh, prior to Khrushchev's. And uh, believe me, when, when they hit the concrete, they hit it hard. There is a tremendous scorching of the wheels and uh, a flare of uh, blue smoke uh, as uh, the rubber is burned off as those wheels make contact. And then the nose wheel slowly settling down gives you another and smaller burst of uh, blue smoke before the great plane rolls on and from our vantage point disappears for a moment before it again turns around, taxis back and takes up its position. This is Khrushchev's plane that we have just been watching uh, entering into its landing pattern and which very shortly is going to be coming into our view as it makes a landing here at the Des Moines Municipal Airport. Expectancy is gathering by the moment. The uh, military police are standing uh, ready for action all around the fringes. The newsmen, and I would hate to arrive at an exact count or attempt to, but I would suppose that certainly there must be uh, 500 newsmen gathered right here on the edge in front of our mobile unit from which our television cameras are operating. And they're all waving at each other, uh, making sure their cameras are ready to operate, uh, watching the uh, uh, play of the various security guards as they begin to take up new position. And we are now about to get a good look at Premier Khrushchev's plane as it comes in from the north, having uh, passed over a part of the city of Des Moines as it made its big circular approach to the Des Moines airport. And he is very low to the ground. However, you're going to be able to see him right over the farm buildings that are visible here at the present time, right over a white house, which is directly across from the Des Moines airport. And you are now seeing that giant plane with a plume of uh, jet fuel smoke emerging from its engines, slowly settling down. It is going probably to pass behind the house in your view for just a moment. There it is. And it's now very, very close to the runway itself. We here can listen to the whistle of those giant motors. The plane has just set down. And it is bouncing a little bit. We won't give him too many points for that landing. We saw a couple of better ones earlier, to be right honest. Now the nose wheel is down. Russian Premier Khrushchev has arrived in Des Moines and in the state of Iowa. It'll be a little while before we get a look at him because those planes roll a long way before they come to a halt. And you have heard the roar of the engines as they attempt to slow down the progress of that roll. Uh, very shortly, however, it will have run out its course. It will have turned around. Uh, we will hear the roar of the engines as it taxis slowly uh, toward the position where the official party of greeters, Governor Lovelace, Lieutenant Governor McManus, Mayor Isles, the President of the Chamber of Commerce, Frank Depute, and John Adams, the Executive Secretary of the Des Moines Chamber of Commerce, are waiting to greet him. Those who have been in the news party uh, waiting for the arrival of Khrushchev, who actually flew here ahead of him, as I've explained in the press planes, which always precede the arrival of a VIP and uh, this sort of a tour of the country, uh, tell us that uh, while Khrushchev is more happy than he was when he left Los Angeles, that uh, they have marked him as a man who uh, doesn't attempt to conceal his emotions many times and uh, is pretty impetuous and uh, that uh, they believe on balance at the present moment that uh, not too much has happened on the tour which uh, greatly enhances the prospect of uh, some major agreement coming out of his talks with President Eisenhower at Camp David, Maryland at the end of the tour. I talked briefly with John Scully, the diplomatic reporter of the Associated Press who arrived on this plane, and uh, he expressed his belief that uh, uh, nobody among the American public would be wise to expect really sensational developments out of the conference between Eisenhower and Khrushchev at Camp David. Now that big plane is coming in. You can see it beautifully turning around. There is a line marked on the airport runway here where the plane is supposed to stop. And uh, as you can hear our directors, probably in the background, urging our cameramen to get uh, still better shots, perhaps you can even hear in the background the roar of the plane's motors 
as that giant 707 jet turns around and begins to take up the position from which it will shortly be disembarking the official Russian party. For a moment, so that you can get the sound of those jet motors a little better, I'm going to step to another point of vantage, and I think you undoubtedly are going to agree with me that uh, the powerful engines of a Boeing 707 jet are alone quite an impressive force when you encounter them for the very first time at an airport such as this, which has not been used to seeing or to dealing with them. Beautiful airplanes, though. Military Air Transport Service on the side, U.S. Air Force on the label, and, of course, they bear that flaming, uh, fluorescent type of paint on the nose and portions of the wing and tail structure, which are intended to serve as recognition marks when the plane is seen in the air. Now the Khrushchev plane is slowly moving over, following an Air Force truck from the Air National Guard here, which bears a follow me sign, and we'll move to a position where we, along with you, can get a better view of the arrival of the Russian Premier. The plane is slowly moving up into the corridor. Notice that little truck, which bore the follow me sign. This is guiding the pilot as he turns that enormous airplane and takes up its position at a designated spot already marked on the runway where he will park the plane. Notice the turn. The plane is now pointing in a southerly direction, and it will shortly come to a stop. The military police are beginning to get ready to roll that ramp out to the side of the 707. And before long, the Russian Premier, American Ambassador Lodge, who is his official escort on this visit, and who is, of course, our ambassador to the United Nations, Mrs. Khrushchev, members of the Premier's family, and many other members of the party, including, of course, his son and two of his daughters, will be present as the greeting takes place. You see the ramp running up. You see the ramp moving up toward the front. And in a moment, some of the members of the Russian party are going to be emerging. Here come members of the uh, Air Force crew, and uh, the people getting out of the front part of the airplane are evidently other members of the party. Uh, our indication at the present is that it may probably be from the back door that Premier Khrushchev will emerge. That seems to be the situation. Uh, attendant, uh, attention, rather, is very quickly shifting right now from the front door to the back door. Uh, another ramp is being rolled up to the back door, and uh, military police are taking up their position, forming uh, an escort uh, and uh, a protective barrier for the Russian Premier to emerge. As is customary, some of the security people and other officials are getting off first, and uh, there is a pause while we wait for Premier Khrushchev himself to appear. The cameramen along the uh, edge of the runway here uh, all have their machines pointed and eagerly are waiting for their first shot at uh, the Russian Premier to record him on motion picture film. And uh, everywhere the eye uh, sees, there are newsmen eager to report this. On my left, for example, is a representative of one of the wire services, one of the most distinguished reporters, I think, known to the American press today, Pat Moran of the Associated Press, Relman Pat Moran. He's got a phone, a field phone, connected here and is, is doing an eyewitness description of the arrival of Premier Khrushchev to the Associated Press office downtown. Other members of the Russian party are beginning to appear, and now here is Premier Khrushchev. He is uh, coming down the ramp now, as you see, the stocky figure of the Premier of Soviet Russia, uh, slowly descending the steps, uh, gesturing as he so often does, uh, stopping, uh, waving his hat. Uh, uh, he wants to be uh, uh, greeted immediately and to return greeting to those who are here from the state of Iowa. Off to the right, uh, uh, practically a flotilla of uh, motorcycles arrives from the police department of the city of Des Moines and as Premier Khrushchev walks slowly forward to meet the members of the official party who will greet him, he uh, still gestures, still carries that gray Homburg hat in one hand, uh, jokes a bit as Henry Cabot Lodge follows behind him, and uh, as Gromyko is to our left, immediately behind him, the Russian foreign minister. 
Here uh, Khrushchev arrives a little closer to the official party. You can see him shaking hands now with the governor, with Mayor Isles, and with uh, Lieutenant Governor McManus. Mrs. Lovelace is in the cloche hat that you may be able to make out in that picture. Now you can see just how many people there are in that group as the governor and the mayor and the president of the Des Moines Chamber of Commerce, the lieutenant governor. There's Mayor Isles shaking hands. Mrs. Isles is now doing so. Chris Job bows and shakes hands vigorously, expresses uh, his delight to be here in Iowa, while behind him, notice the figure on the left. That is that very clever and uh, able interpreter, Troyanovsky, the son of the first Soviet ambassador to the United States, who is uh, interpreting as these introductions are made. There is Mrs. Khrushchev. We have an excellent look at her right now. She is directly behind and a little bit to the right of the Soviet premier. There's John Adams shaking hands with Khrushchev, and Mrs. Khrushchev is right behind. Uh, again, the handshaking goes on as members of the party are being greeted right and left, and now the Russian premier stands for a moment waiting with Henry Cabot Lodge while a photographer lifts high his camera trying to get over that mass of humanity packed around the edge as he attempts to get a picture of what is going on. Now, here we are from the field. As soon as he finishes, the governor Chairman Khrushchev, as governor of Iowa, I welcome you to Iowa. I uh, think that uh, you're aware that you're in the heart of this United States. Uh, we pride ourselves on all of our farmlands, which I think you are familiar with. And we're known, you know, as a state of tall corn, but we have a lot of tall industries, too, growing up in the midst of our plains. So we, we hope that you see our homes and factories and churches and schools and much as your time will permit you. We have, uh, we think we have the home of the, the culture as well as the production of agricultural products here in this Midwest. And so we hope that you will be able to see some of the things we have. Mr. Governor, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very glad of this opportunity to visit your state. Our people know something about the state of Iowa. And we're, uh, we, I will, I'll be very glad to make my acquaintance with the state. To see how people live here. Кукурузу мы знаем, что вы занимаете первое место в Соединенных Штатах. We know that as far as corn is concerned, you're first in the United States. Мы с вами соревнуемся. We are competing with you there. И думаю, что это будет очень полезно. And I believe this will be a useful competition for both parties. Спасибо за добрые слова. Thank you for your kind words. За слова привета. Your words of welcome. Думаю, что наши встречи и беседы будут сближать нас. I believe that our meetings, our talks will bring us nearer to each other. И будут создавать необходимые условия, которых ждет человечество, с тем, чтобы обеспечить мир и дружбу между народами. And will help bring about favorable conditions for peace and friendship in the world. Спасибо за встречу, за добрые пожелания. Thank you for the warm welcome and the good wishes.
And there, ladies and gentlemen, you heard Governor Herschel Lovelace of Iowa extending an official welcome on behalf of this state to Russian Premier Khrushchev. And as you heard, Khrushchev replied with a tribute to Iowa's rank as the, as the number one corn producing state in the Union and could not resist at the moment the opportunity to mention once again that in this field too, Soviet Russia expected to compete with Iowa as he has indicated the Russians do in so many fields with Americans. And then very quickly with no other part of the ceremony, uh, the group disbanded and uh, the official party is about to get into the cars to begin the cavalcade to the Fort Des Moines Hotel traveling down McKinley, then down Fleur to Locust, along Locust to 10th, and down Locust to the Fort Des Moines Hotel where that large crowd is waiting and where we presume almost equally large crowds are waiting at other places on the route between here and the hotel. Uh, the governor and Premier Khrushchev will be getting into the open car. You see a group of people, including Henry Cabot Lodge, clustered about that car right now, and you see an exchange of information of some sort going on between Lodge and uh, Khrushchev. Khrushchev, uh, if I see correctly at the moment, has a coat on now and is also wearing that hat that he has used uh, with which to gesture so many, many times. I imagine he'll be rather pleased to ride in an open car. You know, he made some pretty barbed comments about riding in a closed car in Los Angeles, which he thought was too hot. Well, the closed car they had for him, if he wanted it today here in Des Moines, was to be an air-conditioned one, so he wouldn't have been able to complain about that too much, but uh, it's obvious that he prefers an open car where he would be able to see and be seen uh, with a great deal more ease. The uh, motorcycle policeman, a uh, veritable phalanx of them, has been gathered here getting ready to escort him, and before long we will see the Khrushchev party leaving out of our view at the moment, other members of the party, including uh, Mayor Isles, the Lieutenant Governor, uh, the members of the Chamber of Commerce, Mrs. Khrushchev, of course, Mrs. Lovelace, and all the others who have been uh, present for these brief welcoming ceremonies will be getting into their cars, and the whole cavalcade will head for downtown Des Moines. Motorcycle escorts, you see, uh, on either side. Uh, the car which bears Khrushchev carries uh, on its forward portion as you... <laughs>